And these proposals are being called radical, socialist, and extreme, even by some Democrats. But the rates and brackets being proposed actually have a long precedent in American history. Republican uh, uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, of course, pr proposing that top tax rate of 70%. That actually was the top tax rate until 1980, and it had been as high as 91% in the 1960s. Now, the share of total income going to the top 1% started rising during that time in the 1980s, doubling from about 10% to over 20% today. Now, Bernie Sanders' estate tax, that would lower the exemption from the current $11.4 billion to about $3.5 billion. Million. That was the exemption in 2009. So his proposal, while it sounds radical, 11 going down to 3 was actually the rate only in 2009. All of which may help explain why a majority of Americans support higher taxes on people other than themselves, the wealthy. <laughs> Three quarters of those polled by Politico and Morning Consult support increasing the top tax rate to 70 percent. A Fox News poll found that a majority of Republicans also back higher taxes on those making more than 10 million. And what the candidates don't mention, and a number I haven't seen at all in the past two weeks, is that the top 10, top 1% pay among the highest share of federal income taxes in history. That's close to 40%. Yeah, that's pretty progressive. Uh, but but now, back when these, I mean, we've heard these rates before that it was well, as high they, as 91%, no but what was, actual, yeah. what was they the actual, what was the actual paid, so pay. if you look at the 50s and 60s, they actually paid around 40% was, the, was effective, the effective tax rate. Effective tax rate. Federal, the effective, federal or Correct, state? federal. The effective tax rate today is around 26%. So we went from effective of about 42, 43 okay. to 26. Why can't so, we just find a way to close the loopholes and say, here's what you're actually paying in taxes? Well, because those loopholes include charitable deductions. And, and, but and other things. There's less deductions today or more deductions less. today? Less. I mean, basically everything but charitable deduction has gone away. Right. In terms Why of does 1980 sound familiar? That's when we went down for. Oh, that's right. It was the Reagan miracle. Yeah. And the Reagan economy after we cut down. Well, oh, okay. Never we mind. have. And, and <laughs> the other side of that is we have had growth, strong growth during times Mark was when, 700. Taxes, when taxes went up. During the Clinton years, taxes went up and we had strong you know growth. What, though? So it, it, it may be that charitable deductions are the only deductions that are left from normal people to take, but there are yeah. all kinds of loopholes. There are reasons that some people oh, are paying a 5% or an 8% tax rate. A lot of those, That's a different story. A lot of those, though, relate to capital gains, private ownership of companies. Um, so those are things that really are, are the preserve Private of those at, those at the top. Right, right, you know, the, the left pushes free things, the right pushes free dumb. It's just the, the, the two <laughs> free, different ways. Free, free, free dumb <laughs> versus free things. I, I and think it, Andrew makes a good point, and in, in, he's made this point for, for several years, which is, that, which is that the crisis, we still don't appreciate the larger impacts of the crisis. I think we all think it's yeah. over, we're recovered. And I think one of the remnants of that is this populism, uh, that the economy is unfair, the way people are taxed is unfair, and I think that didn't have a chance to express it. itself it, in the last the, election, because Hillary was so wealthy, right. she couldn't talk Robert, about the, it. Robert, the, the organic, hopefully, wage income yeah. uh, increases that we're starting to see with faster GDP growth, yes. which I'm hoping it, will say it, it has replaced 0% interest rates and a very active Fed during the Obama years right. where all assets got, right. on purpose, the wealth effect was being engendered by the Fed to make people feel better. So people that had assets obviously had their assets And inequality up. has actually come down in the last few years, right. although from, with, from high levels. With, and I think the it focus... To, it's, 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 you know, it's counterintuitive to what you would think it yeah. is because you would think that you know, Obama always talked about trying to help a certain group of people, right. and a lot of the policies which kept us at zero ended up hurting the people he was designing to help. Right. So if you'd get higher GDP growth permanently, you hope that the, the jobs become scarce, people go to, and switch jobs to make more money, they can ask for more money, they can ask for more benefits, and it starts happening that way. Unless you just think you take, you Robin Hood it, and you take right. from some person, and then give it to the government, who hopefully gets it into the, the hands or the, the fortunes of the people they're trying to help, which I don't really think they normally do. And that's do. why there's a civil war within the Democratic Party. Those who say the focus should be on the middle and right. the bottom and helping those people, not just taking from the top without Just putting a cap on, do on, on creating millionaires is stupid. We, we, right. I want to make everyone a Joe, millionaire. Well, okay, here's a question for you. So I, know, 70, I know how you feel. Seventy percent makes no sense. In, in my Unless opinion. that top bracket is ten million. 
In, in which case, and you'll you know, like I'm, that until you start making ten million, then you no, won't no, like no, it. No, no, no. I think that seventy percent is confiscatory, and I think that that's very how about um, I think how about a wealth tax? tax. Is, I, I think like, a wealth I tax. Like what you said to somebody, I won't name who. To you said to somebody, oh, we're okay with a wealth tax because that doesn't affect right. any of us. It's I, think a wealth, <laughs> I think a wealth right. tax is very. I think a wealth tax, unfortunately, right? both is confiscatory yeah. and very complicated to enact. They don't work. Okay. And However, by the way. I would not be against um, an estate tax, which, by the way, is to do some some degree a wealth tax that you can actually um, you, you can actually execute on, because part of it is you can re it's only you can only really tax people at a transfer at a transfer moment. That's why a wealth tax doesn't really work. An estate tax and a state tax that also goes down to three point four million dollars or whatever it is from. Well, and Bernie Sanders' rate goes to seventy seven right percent. Nobody, no wealthy person who's paying who. Paying the estate tax is actually paying the estate tax. No, they which is my aren't. problem. Only you get rid of all of those things. So you that have hide to change it. all of the loopholes, the, the trusts. No trusts all, are allowed. All right. of the, all right. of, that's you know, if you actually really want to deal with this in a meaningful way, yeah. that's where you have make to it, deal. As Gary Cohen said, it, only morons pay the estate tax right. because trusts are so easy but to set up. Second to die stuff. So, no, but, that, but, but if you're if you're trying, the question is, are you trying to raise money, right. or are you trying to redistribute and punish, right? And and where where do those two things intersect or not? And I think that's sort of where the conversation has to be. It, By the it, way, one of the things nobody talks about, and look, I am all for charity and philanthropy, but there is a real question. If you're talking about just straight power, mm -hmm. if that's what this is about, it's about people who, who, who uh, there's a view that somehow people have too much power, it's that most of the money of great wealth is not ever taxed in any way, in part because it's being given away. So Warren Buffett's uh, great wealth, for the most part, will never get taxed in any meaningful way because it will get given away in a philanthropic way. Bill it, Gates. It got taxed pretty heavily Bill, Bill in, Gates. in Nebraska same, when his wife passed away. Same way. And so the question, therefore, I mean, if you really want to have this conversation, I don't know if anybody wants to tax philanthropy because you'd want the money to get to, uh, to, to, to good deeds. But then there's a question of do you want one individual or, or, or certain types of individuals to have that much more control over where money goes uh, than others? That's, I think that's a different discussion. Yeah.